Hey yo, this is Big Daddy Kane, and you're listening to another hot interview on the library with Tim Einenkel on rapstation.com. one of the founding members of the legendary hip-hop group Black Sheep, and he continues to impact the art as a solo artist and as a co-creator along with Jerobi White as a, of A Tribe Called Quest of the group Evitan. I want to welcome Drez, a.k.a. Black Sheep Drez, to the Library of Tim Kill on rapstation.com. Ah, thanks for having me, bro. All right. uh, so the, I just want to start with the, obviously, the fir- your Black Sheep's debut album, uh, A Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, and then, of course, we'll get into what's going on now and stuff like that. Um, the intro cut for that album uh it was one of mocking the then increasing lyrics of that spoke about crime and sometimes even glorified crime uh and the criminal lifestyle and you've, you kind of talked about how in past interviews you talked about how as someone who did time in rikers island you came out and noticed that people weren't as quote unquote as hard as they were pretending to be on on the record uh that said fast forward to today it seems now the glorification of crime culture is a must in order to get commercial play why do you think this is the case? Um, wow, that's a really good question. Um, one of the things that I really kind of see in today's society is the continuation of the the bondage. You know, what I'm saying at this point, it's more of, of of a of a mental thing. And you know, what I'm saying I seriously, you know, it's I guess possibly my own theory, but uh, I definitely look at it as you know, people of color. You know, the children of slaves, you know what I'm saying, have for too long been, you know, broken and, and and having to deal with a broken lifestyle. You know, people would rather be broke than be broken, you know what I'm saying, which is unfortunate. You know what I'm saying, if you're broke, you can always kind of rebound the next day. But if you're broken, you know, that's much more of a task. And the powers that be seem to contribute to the dysfunction of people of color by perpetuating such lifestyles you know what I'm saying by you know making it very accessible for you to hear things that that go totally against the grain of human culture human nature and just being a human being you know what I'm saying these are the things that we hear on a daily basis on our radio stations as as opposed to some of the uplifting things that do exist you know what I'm saying and in my opinion it creates a climate that we are kind of numb to the, the the glorification of the violence, you know what I'm saying? And so when we see it, we're not as opposed to it as not even this that we see it when we hear it. We're not as opposed to it as we should be. You know what I'm saying? And it sets up a climate whereas, you know, that the prison industry is big business. It perpetuates people of color being incarcerated, thus the big business of prison being, you know what I'm saying um continually blown up like right now most prisons are privatized people that fill these prisons are people of color the people of color that fill these prisons are all people that were basically listening to the radio and you know what I'm saying kind of got caught up in the windfall of the things that are pushed on our community that being said you know what I'm saying I feel like a lot of what we're hearing is literally paid for by the powers that be to kind of keep these mental chains in place you know what I'm saying it would be so easy for us to speak of greater things and to show greater things and you know instead of us putting that kind of energy into us improving life we continue to you know to stay stagnated you know what I'm saying right where we are because it feeds the pockets of something of an agenda that's above our heads you know what I'm saying and I know that's a lot to say about music but I really really you know what I'm saying look at the world we live in and the things that are pushed on our children it's uh, it's really important for us especially as parents at this point to you know to monitor to monitor what's going on in our lives and the lives of our children because it it directly affects them when they have to make decisions on their own you know what i'm saying when once it comes to the point that they're making decisions on their own but all of these ill things are being inundated in their lives and and just really pushed upon them they don't see the problem with taking these penitentiary chances on a daily basis for literally sneaker money, you know what I'm saying, 
if if that you know people are much more into notoriety than they are into into making money you know everyone says they're trying to make money and this and the other but cats really just want to be known and they'll do anything for it i.e you know the kardashians to you know the love and hip hops of the world to every reality show that's on television like it's all problematic and and it's at a point now where the people are really numb to it for the most part people are really numb to it and it's really having a a, a, a counterclockwise effect on the culture you're someone who has obviously been in the industry for a while and from a total outside perspective you could kind of understand when you were first coming up right and even earlier that uh, artists would because hip hop wasn't as popular artists would do anything like you know just become popular and move the rap, move rap music but now you're at a time where rap is the most popular genre out there so this seems like the artist should be the most powerful and even Today you have the Russell Simmons of the world who, but yet, as you mentioned, this negative stereotype of black people are actually, you know, continuously perpetuated. Am I, I don't know, am I missing something? Am I like not understanding why, why you're at a time where there's a lot of power from what seems to be the artist's perspective uh, versus back then, which wasn't as much power and there's more diversity in the music. And now there's less less diversity, but more power. On, am I missing something here? Um, nah, you're not. Um, yeah, it's very unfortunate, and it, you're hitting it right on the head. You know, what I'm saying like we do have this power that we're not honing in on, and that we're not taking advantage of, and that we're not even moving together on. They say that the you know the, the, a statement from from back was that the rap game's a lot like the crack game, and and I would agree with that, especially to the extent that people will sacrifice so, uh, the advancement of the masses for self-glorification. And that's kind of where we're at with it. As opposed to people moving together, as opposed to artists coming together. I mean, the things that we're talking about from distribution to marketing and promotion, all of these things can be done internally while artists moving together. We're at a point where there's more millionaires in the music than there's ever been in the history of music. You know what I'm saying? Yet all of these cats are much more into self-glorification than, than the advancement of anything. You know what I'm saying? There's, there is no advancement of us as a people when cats would rather, you know, when, when they'd rather, you know, put money into, um, you know, a Bentley or into, you know, an, an address or the baubles of jewelry as opposed to their own people. You know what I'm saying? Like these own people don't own, you know, simple things that would help advance the people. You know, saying it's much more of a self-glorification thing. And this is one of the mistakes that was made when cats were hustling. Everybody went for self and tried to do, you know, their own thing. And, you know, they'd uh, rather wear a mink and, you know, some jewelry and, you know, have a car waiting for them. than do something simple like open a bodega or invest in a brownstone in Harlem, you know, 20 years ago when it was eight, eight ten thousand dollars Now they're, you know, $800,000 and they can't get in, you know what I'm saying? But it was simple solutions that just weren't being adhered to. And it still continues today, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's more of a, on a self-mission as opposed to us just coming together. And it would be so simple. In hip-hop today, there's probably 100 millionaires, you know what I'm saying? That if they bonded on any level, could affect change. You know what I'm saying? And rather than that, they'd rather be on Instagram showing you the things that you'll never afford that they have. You know what I'm saying? And don't see the value in the people. And and that's where we lose continually because, you know, when, you, when you're combating the things that we're listening to on the radio and, and, and then, you, and then you, the things that you idolize, the people that you kind of look up to, don't even talk to you, let alone talk for you. You know what I'm saying? It's really a lose-lose situation that we're kind of looking at right now unless, you know, the people come together and do something different. And, 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 and I say optimistic about it because I feel like at any day the people could change this. You know what I'm saying? The things that we support, the things that, you know, that, that, that we allow to come into our homes, to come into our lives. You know what I'm saying? Like if there was any form and semblance of unity, these things could change. But as long as we continue to kind of put ourselves in front of the greater good of our people, and when I say our people, I speak for hip-hop, you know what I'm saying, 
that being, you know, it doesn't matter what color you are, what gender you are, what, you know, your sexual preference is. If you're under the umbrella of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? We're all the same. You know what I'm saying? And if these people could come together and and affect change, this change would be the new blueprint. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For us to do some really, really powerful things in the world as opposed to just, you know, wearing baubles and, you know, and claiming something that isn't even real. You, you touched on commercial radio, and, and obviously you've had commercial radio success. Um, so I want to, if you look at commercial, for me, if you look at commercial rap music as a human stage of development, I feel like one can argue today that the current stage is one of a teenager or an adolescence, right? I say it often, I say it often. Um, and you obviously are much older now than when you first started out, right? So there is, there is, there are a group of, from your generation that has grown up. Um, do you think in order, do you foresee a future where in order to be commercially successful, you could kind of be an adult rapper or, and also, are you still tr trying for commercial success with your music or have you just kind of let that go? Um, well, I definitely feel like, uh, commercial success is, uh, not necessarily something that I'm pursuing wholeheartedly I do feel like you know the more people that hear your music especially when you have something to say the better do I wish more um more elder hip-hop artists were being heard commercially definitely because you know the, it's like almost like I put like this an analogy would be a chef or even even someone in rock and roll or jazz you know once once you're 20 years into it you're you're a master you know what I'm saying, and 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 your your work is sought is sought after. You know what I'm saying. The ageism in hip hop is under, is is very unfortunate because you know they they try to make it a young man's game, but that's just another device of of, of separation. You know what I'm saying of divide and conquer. The ageism aspect, and the thing that younger cats fail to realize is that in music, particularly. The lifespan of an artist is very quick. In five to seven years, you're an older artist. If you start right now, in five to seven years, you have some commercial success, seven years from now, you're the older artist. But if you don't set the precedence that you embrace those that were here before you, that you even seeking out the music of those that were here before you because they do have something to say. They do have these things that speak to the, the upright walk that should exist, you know what I'm saying? Then not only are you part of the problem, you'll have to deal with the same problem in seven years, five to seven years. Now you're the older dude with younger cats looking at you like you're in their way, you know what I'm saying? And it's unfortunate that we don't take the same precedence that a jazz does or that a master chef receives, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, like these are people that, you know, have done the work and are truly masters of their field. The same exists for a hip hop artist. You know what I'm saying? I look at the artists that I'm on the road with these days. You know, I do a lot of the the older the legends tours with Rakim, the you know, Big Daddy Kane, EPMD. These cats' music should still be commercially sound. You know what I'm saying? And it's so unfortunate that, you know, that these great artists are sacrificed for youngsters that are basically unintelligible. You know what I'm saying? Saying things that are just contrary to the well-being of people. Not even people of color, but people, period. You know what I'm saying? And that these same people would look down upon the people that paved the way for them. You know what I'm saying? It's very unfortunate. But I also blame the gatekeepers. I blame I blame the, the program directors. It's much more their fault than it is the children's fault that are making music and, 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 and playing by the rules that... Are, that was set before them you know what i'm saying i kind of do an analogy where you know the young cats right now they're all they're all digging holes they're all digging holes the unfortunate thing that they don't know about the holes that they're digging is that they're for them you know what i'm saying once they these finish digging these holes they're forced to get in you know what i'm saying and they don't realize it until they're in the hole you know what i'm saying and you know it's the elder statesman that would show them you know how to maneuver around this hole and you know that the whole shouldn't even exist. You know what I'm saying? But everyone, everybody buy into the, the notion of notoriety. You know, they'd much rather the machine make them known 
than for the machine to put out some music or substance. It's much more about branding than about listening. It also seems like an artist that doesn't embrace, um, I mean, let's say adulthood uh, in terms of his, his or her content is that it's, it's he or she will be cutting his career short because, I mean, honestly, who's going to believe like a 50-year-old person talking about yeah. what kids talk about today, right? I mean, it's just yeah, like... Real talk. Real talk. Yeah, it's unfortunate that even cats like a Jay-Z, you know, when they do make music, they're still talking about, you know, selling crack. Like, that's, that's, that's unfortunate, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he's one of the cats that literally, you know, for, well, for a moment, he was one of the cats that, you know, literally could have spoke to cats about you know the the pitfalls. You know what I'm saying, and how to how to how to how to work around them, or even you know speak about the greatness of you know of him maintaining his credit rating and you know simple things that would help kids move forward. You know you could still kind of be the artist that you want to be and make some of the music that you want to make, but you should also you know what I'm saying be well rounded. And you know for every for every you know one of those records, you should make a record that kind of you know speaks to the walk of who you really are. You know, I'm not saying that everyone has to make up this positive record that speaks to, you know, you being this church going, you know, upright citizens brigade, but at the end of the day, there should be growth, you know what I'm saying? And and even your mistakes, you know, there should be kind of known how you maneuvered out of them. You know what I'm saying? No one really gives the keys to to the door anymore. They just they just want you to they just want to be seen in the room. They don't want to necessarily show you the things that goes that you have to go through to get in the room, and the things that you have to go through to stay in the room. You know what I'm saying? And and that's unfortunate as well. You know, once again, that's us sacrificing the advancement of ourselves for self glorification. You know, and you know that's that's a real unfortunate thing in hip hop. One of the things that I I had hoped that the native tongue would be able to kind of circumvent a lot of this and you know it's unfortunate that the, even the native tongue don't get the opportunity to speak you know what I'm saying to be heard you know like it's everything is much more on an independent note this, this these days but this is something that you know that would make radio even stronger uh, unfortunately they seem oblivious to it you know what I'm saying but if they could you know speak to some of the solutions that everyone goes through you know what I'm saying? And there's music out there, there's artists out there that do walk it and and that do speak to it, to the plights of men and and, and women. You know what I'm saying? But these records really don't get a lot of opportunity to be heard, you know, for a Two Chains or a Young Thug or what have you. You know, these records that almost make you dumber for having heard them. You know, no slight to these artists, but I feel like these artists are slighting, slighting the community. You know what I'm saying? Like any artist that says they'll dumb themselves down to make money, you know what I'm saying? Like that's a, you're a sellout, you know, and, and I don't have a problem calling you that. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm from with it. I'm, I'm a dope MC. I don't need someone to tell me that. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm nice with mine, and, and, and I wish that cats could grow to be nice with theirs too, you know, sincerely. Uh, earlier you spoke about kind of, and, you know, you spoke about paying respects to those before you. And you did a lot in your music, I've noticed. You, you, you know, you did that with, uh, especially in the um, the Evitan album. Um, and something that really stood out to me, and it's something that I've, that I've noticed that artists do, is that they always give, one way or another in their lyrics, they give they give an ode to Stevie Wonder. And I know you, you said that you started listening to Stevie Wonder when you were 10 years old. And you recently posted a bunch of uh, YouTube uh, s- songs via YouTube uh, on your Twitter account of Stevie. I was singing last night at Madison Square Garden. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> my phone with me and his daughter. Literally. Oh, that is awesome. Oh wow. Uh, um, yeah. What? So what is it, what is it about Stevie Wonder that you think influences hip hop musicians? But also, what is it about Stevie Wonder that influences you? Well, Stevie Wonder definitely is unequivocally my favorite artist. Um, he introduced me to the power of words. You know what I'm saying? And I think that kind of resonates probably with a lot of people as well as artists. You know what I'm saying? And he speaks to a hope and and and, and aspiration that should exist in all of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he speaks to the notion that, that love is much greater than than, than the hate and, and, and the indecencies that, you know, we go through and that and that given the opportunity we could conquer all of these things that are in front of us. You know what I'm saying? Just a tremendous, tremendous musician, lyricist, singer. Um, I mean, 
like I said, unequivocally my favorite artist. And there's not very many that I kind of would bend over backwards for. This man I would. Um, he, he speaks to something that, you know, that artists just don't these days. You know, especially if they sing, it's almost like the singers are almost as bad as the, the rappers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like they just hit you with a shock value type of thing. And Stevie speaks to something that's much greater than than a dollar. Then you know what I'm saying, then then even your position in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he speaks to just an upright walk that, you know, that when I look at you I should see myself. You know what I'm saying? And that when I look at, you know, a young lady I should see my sister or my mother or what have you and, and even, you know, in the realms of a relationship, you know, to you know, just how to love someone and, and how to love yourself. And these are things that really don't exist in music, unfortunately, at this point. And, you know, like, I hold this man in very, very high esteem, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I think a lot of artists do that that have been around for a while because they've grown to understand the power not only of their words but of their actions. And sometimes, you know, the things that you put in the universe, you know, when you're young, you really don't see it. You know, you might say anything, you know what I'm saying? But life has a way of showing you what you said. And as you grow older, you know, you, you start taking these things into account. And I think Stevie saw this 30 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Even, you know, as a child, the, the, the things that he, he wrote as, as, a, as a child artist resonate. You know what I'm saying? Just resonate. One of my favorite songs is a song that he wrote called Evil. And, um, you know, it's literally, literally a song written to evil. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, like, just conceptually, this man, and you know, 